Hello everyone, welcome to a new advanced math lecture. Today we will be going over 1999 USAMO problem number 4. Here's a view of this problem. We are given real numbers A1 through AN, N of them, and we are assuming here that N is at least 4. We, are all, we also know that these N numbers satisfy the following two inequalities here. This is being the first one and the second one here. So obviously the sum of these terms, n terms, would be greater than or equal to n. And also the sum of the squared terms are uh, greater than or equal to n squared. We would like to prove that the maximum of these n numbers must be at least 2, if not higher. Okay, so what I will do is I will first solve this, prove this, for the case where all ai's, case 1, where all the AIs, so A1 through AN, are all greater than or equal to zero. Then later on I will remove that constraint and prove it for a more generic case. Huh? So when this is the case, it is not, as, uh, not too hard to show that the maximum of these numbers, A1 um, through AN, is definitely less greater than or equal to the square root of a1 squared plus all the way to a sub n squared all divided by n so do you guys agree with this observation all you can do to confirm it because all the ai's are greater than or equal to zero you can square both sides of this expression and so on the left hand side i would have the square square of whichever is the maximum number and then i do cross multiplication the n will come to the left hand side so Obviously, it would be n times the square of the maximum of these numbers, and obviously this expression will be greater than or equal to just any random one of them. Each one on the left is definitely greater than the ones on the right, so just to be on the safe side, let me go ahead and rewrite this thing. So obviously what I mean is, here I have, uh, after squaring it, so I will have a 1 square, um, assuming also that... Um, a1 is the largest of these numbers, or, yeah, so in that case I will have A1 squared, I'm basically replicating it n times, right, A1 squared n times, n times, and that is sure to be greater than A1 squared plus all the way to A n squared, for a good reason, because A1 squared is equal to a1 squared, but then a1 squared is greater than a2 squared, and so on, a1 squared will be definitely greater than a n squared, assuming again that a1 is greater than or equal to a2 all the way to a sub n, so a1 in that sense is the maximal of these elements. Now going back to our equations, uh, well inequality here, uh, in the next step I claim that this is greater than or equal to square root of n, that one is obvious because, well, this sum, uh, the sum of squares here is already given to be greater than or equal to n squared. Dividing it by n, we have an n remaining. And obviously, n here is at least 4, given in the question. So it must be the case that this thing is also greater than or equal to 2. And that solves uh, the problem for the case where all the AIs are greater than or equal to 0. But nowhere in the problem is this restriction binding so therefore i we would like to also make the assumption that some of them might be zero so greater than zero some of them might be less than zero so we need to generalize this case here so that's what i will do in my next uh, page slide here so in case two or the more generic case general case you might say case two will uh, also contain case one um let's assume to the contrary um yeah, yeah. Let's first uh, make the assumption that let uh, some of these uh, numbers, a1 through a, let's say, k, are less than or equal to 0. And then you have the other numbers which are greater than or equal to 0, obviously. And everything all the way to a sub n. Now, I would like to make um, an assumption to the contrary of what we claim here, a sub n, which is the maximal of these numbers. Let's assume it is strictly less than 2 to the contrary, right? 
Therefore, all we need to do now is um, to find a contradiction, right? Which will be based on this expression here. So I will make use of this, but I will contradict this second inequality. So let's go ahead. So I would like to start with the following. Um, so zero is greater than or equal to the sum of uh, a sub i's from between i equals one to k. All these numbers are negative, so huh, their sum should be negative as well. So that thing is greater than or equal to n minus the summation i equals from uh, k plus 1 all the way to n um, a sub i. So why is that the case? Because of this condition here. All I did is, uh, so just to confirm, uh, you can go ahead and take this expression, move it to the left-hand side, and you will see this inequality immediately. And then we claim that this is strictly greater than n minus 2 times n minus k. Why would that be? Well, we know that there are n minus k of our numbers are, are, are positive, and they are strictly all strictly less than 2 as well. So therefore... All these numbers between um, k plus 1 and the kth uh, power, they are all um, um, greater than 0, but at the same time they are strictly less than 2, so that condition is obvious then. And that whole thing is simply equal to 2k minus n. So therefore, um, now I can go ahead and square both sides, so I will just go ahead and do that, square both sides of this expression obviously when i square everything here is negative the signs will flip huh? uh, so therefore i will have the square um, let me actually create some space here um, i will need that space in a minute so what i have here is the square of a sub i the left hand side basically right so from i equals from one to k that thing is less than, strictly less than the square of this expression here, 2k minus n squared, which turns out to be equal to 4k squared um, minus 4kn plus n squared. And obviously now, I would like to point out that this thing, this left-hand side expression, is greater than or equal to summation of ai squares. Why would that be? Well, the reason is obvious because so this inequality holds because we will have a lot of cross products like a i a sub i times a sub j when we expand this thing and this one is lacking it. So this when you expand it, all these terms because they are strictly greater than zero or at least uh, greater than or equal to zero, it will be the case that uh, our expression will be greater than or equal to this expression over here. Now I, I'm, I'm almost done with my proof. So uh, I, I, as I said earlier, I, we made this contradictory assumption at the beginning. So I would like to show that this will violate this inequality here. All I do is I start with the left hand side here. So therefore summation a sub i squares. It's an i here and i equals from uh, 1 to uh, n, obviously. So that thing would be equal to um, the sum of, and the two sums, uh, i equals from 1 to k, uh, a sub i squared plus uh, the summation from k plus 1 to n, a sub i squared again, k plus 1 this time, all the way to n, i equals, and again we have a sub i squared here. Okay, so obviously this is strictly less than well, uh, at least this one, we know it's strictly less than this expression over here. So we have 4 um, k squared, I guess, uh, minus 4 k n uh, plus n squared. And this one over here would be, uh, well, obviously greater than, well, this expression itself is 
uh, because each of our AIs are assumed to be, well, between k plus 1 and n, they are assumed to be positive numbers, but still strictly less than 2 when you square them, each one is definitely less than 4. So that's why I will go ahead and say 4 times, and we have n minus k of these positive numbers here. So that actually does the trick for us, uh, because it's possible now to factorize it. So let me continue on this step here. So that whole thing turns out the right hand side is equal to n squared uh, minus, uh, I believe, 4 times k minus 1 times n minus k, which is less than or equal to n, n squared, I should say. And this is clearly a contradiction because we initially, and we want to show that this was greater than or equal to n squared, it turns out to be strictly less than n squared. So this is a contradiction. So, and therefore we have solved this problem and we are done with our proof. So hope to see you in our next video.